I just wanted to share that experience and that love and that passion for this with other people. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast, your CrossFit upgrade. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I have a YouTuber, journalist, and dog mom, and yeah, Amanda Hari. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Thank you for doing this, by the way. And uh, how, how I found out about you was through Hiller. Yep. He's done so, some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think... You were talking, I he had you on one of his YouTube videos, and so I was like, Oh, who is this person? So then I, I looked at your YouTube and I was like, Oh, she has like you know some great content. So I subscribed, and yeah, you're 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 killing it, you're doing great. Yeah, I love doing the YouTube thing. It's something I've thought about doing for a lot longer than as long as I've been doing it. Mm -hmm. I've I'll be doing CrossFit 10 years next month. So I've been in the space for a really long time. At one of my gyms, one of the owners suggested years ago, like, you should start YouTube with all your media stuff. That would be a great idea. And I just never did it. Like, I never thought, like, who would want to hear my perspective? Like, yeah. who am I? Yeah. But about two and a half years ago, I just decided, you know, why not? Like, why not do my thing? You know, who, who knows? Maybe someone will find it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But, uh, before we talk about all that, I kind of want to talk about your experience with, uh, gelatis ice cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was, I was reading your LinkedIn and I saw like gelatis ice cream and I was just like, Oh, okay. Cause I was like trying to see like where you've been and you, you've been, you've been all over the place too. Yes. Yeah. So where, are you, are you from New York or where are you, where are you yes. originally from? Yeah. I'm okay. from the New Jersey, right outside of New York city area. I grew up okay. in a small town, uh, Totowa, New Jersey. It's like four square miles. It doesn't even have a high school or a hospital. But Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Small town. But it's right outside of New York City. So it's not yeah. like the real small town experience. Mm -hmm. It's just a small town in New Jersey, but yeah. a suburb of New York City. And I went to high school in a town called Wayne, New Jersey. And uh, then I have went to school, college, and then bounced around the country. And now I'm in the Bay Area. I'm in Oakland, California. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And so you went to Syracuse for yeah. uh, your your degree. And so when, when did like when did you learn like, hey, I want to get into journalism? Like, was it through high school or was it earlier on than that? It was probably solidified in high school. Okay. I think I grew up like as a little kid watching a lot of news, which I know is not like necessarily a thing most kids do. But <laughs> in the morning when I like eat my breakfast, I'd have the news on. I just kind of like these people who delivered the news almost became like friends to me or like, you know, secondary parent figures. Mm -hmm. And I really admired them and enjoyed their stories and became interested in doing that. In high school, I joined our paper because we didn't have a broadcast thing at that time. And then while I was in high school, we started this thing called MSG Varsity. It was a sports broadcast okay. website thing um, based off of, it's, it's part of Madison Square Garden. So mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden has their own, in New York City, has their own TV station. Yep. She Varsity was like the high school version of that. It was all online. <laughs> so my high school became part of that. So I started doing some video stuff and sports reporting for that. Decided to go to Syracuse to really pursue broadcasting because Syracuse is a very good program for broadcast journalism. So I went there did like student television, all the broadcast stuff. I actually got into CrossFit when I was there. I started okay. going to, I first dropped into a place called Gorilla Fitness in New Jersey. That was a CrossFit gym. And then when I went to Syracuse, like it was over the summer. And then when I went to Syracuse, I joined CrossFit Syracuse, which uh, Lauren Khalil was a member or is a member there, I think now, another media person in the CrossFit space. So yeah, funny how just small world. That is a small world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so like when you were in college at Syracuse for journalism, how like what's the typical like how does the program work? Because I know you have to do internships and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So how hard is it to kind of, you know, get be in that major? Yeah, getting into the major at Syracuse University in it's called the Newhouse School. That's the name of the undergraduate college. It's a pretty difficult college to get into. If you look at Syracuse's acceptance rate, it's probably around like 50% or 40 something percent. So like, you know, it's a fairly high, high-ish acceptance rate. But yeah. if you look at the Newhouse acceptance rate, it's 
like around 10% or a little wow. bit more than that. So okay. it's a much more difficult school to get into mm -hmm. than the actual university. And I have some friends who went to Syracuse, tried to transfer into Newhouse, the broadcast school, and never got in um, just because it's like a hard school to get into. Yeah. But there's a ton of extracurriculars at Syracuse based on broadcasting because there's so many such a good broadcast program so you don't have to even be in the major to really reap a lot of the benefits of being in that environment it's kind of like you know working out and crossfit if you put yourself in the right environment around the right people that are going to push you you can like still get there wherever mm -hmm. there may be yeah. so i was in the broadcast program but i have a friend who um called a couple of nfl games last year oh cool and he never got into the program for broadcasting. He has a business major. Um, he never had the <laughs> GPA that was high enough to get in. Not that GPA is like what makes a good broadcaster necessarily, but he didn't have the GPA, so he never got in. He stayed in business and just took advantage of all the other stuff. But at Syracuse, you're going to do a lot of stuff outside of class to really become good at your craft. So I did a lot of broadcasting at the student TV station news. I covered sports, covered the basketball team, all of that sort of stuff to really uh, get all the experience to then get a good job and also have a good experience to like leverage that into the YouTube world when I decided to enter that. Mm -hmm. Now, now um, I know Syracuse has a fantastic lacrosse team. They do. And yeah. so <laughs> I, I played for 23 years. And so, okay. yeah. So I've, I've seen the fan base, but I do, like how crazy is it at, at this at Syracuse when the game's going on? Yeah, I would say, I mean, Syracuse is a great lacrosse program and has won a lot of, um, I don't even know what the finals are called. Na they're just national championships or something national like that. They don't have yeah. like a, a fun name. Yeah. Um, just the they've, they've won a bunch of national championships. I know that. And like lacrosse. It, it kind of gets like becomes a stepchild to like the revenue sports. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it doesn't get as much attention as football and as basketball, but it, it does get some attention. Uh, and, but the problem is it ends after the school year's over. Yeah. Yeah. So it just yeah. doesn't line up right. But for the basketball games, it was insane. Like the people would be camping outside in the winter in Syracuse in upstate New York, where there's lake effect snow They'd be camping out to get tickets <laughs> or to get close to the action at some of the yeah. big games like Syracuse Duke or Syracuse Georgetown's a big rivalry, even though we're not in the same conference anymore. We still play them mm -hmm. every year. So like those games are really big and people will sleep outside uh, to get in. We have the on-campus record for the most people attending a college basketball game. That's cool. That's also because we play in a dome. Yeah, it's true. It's like yeah. 54,000 people. So yeah. statistically, it's like much easier for us to, to have this record compared to like Cameron Indoor where Duke plays and there's only a certain number of seats in there. At Syracuse, we can just kind of like extend. Yep, the, yep. Uh, or, or even go on like the third row, third bleachers oh, and stuff like that. At the game that has the hot, like the record attendance, there's no way the people all the way in the back could see anything. They no. had to be watching it on their phone. That's crazy. That's crazy. You were just there for the experience to say yeah. they were there. Yeah, but that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool environment and you kind of need something to rally around when it's uh, you know, 20 degrees and snowing. Yeah. That's what that's why I moved to Georgia. I didn't want to deal with the Massachusetts weather. I just couldn't I couldn't deal with it anymore. I'm like, I don't want to shovel any snow more snow. Like I, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. It's too much. My but sister was... lives in Savannah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So that uh Savannah is about, I think, four hours yeah, from where I am. Far. Yeah. 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 You think it's like really close. And then you look at like, you look at like the map and like, you know, you go on, um, you know, some driving app and it's like four hours. You're like, oh, okay. Oops. Well, everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to Carson this weekend for uh, semifinals. And I am going to try to make it down there. But everyone thinks like, oh, it's so close. You're in California. It's like six hours away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that close. California yeah. is a big state. It's, yes, it's yes. It's yeah. Just... I, I asked a couple people, I'm like, oh, so you're going to drive down there? Like, no, we're probably going to fly. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. All right. It's probably easier. It would be a much quicker flight, but it is really convenient to have a car. Yeah. And like LA is not a great uh, public transit city. Mm. So to get around, if you have a car, it just kind of makes things 
it makes it more flexible. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. So, um, you also did some interns with like NBC and like mm-hmm. Dateline and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So what, what have you learned, uh, from w- like working those as an intern to being a journalist that you are now? Um, I learned that I probably do a lot more as a reporter than those reporters do. Yeah. At those big state, uh, like big, like network, there's a lot of people who are helping with a lot of things like your local reporters for your local news are doing a lot more stuff all on their own. Like I shoot all my own video. I pitch my stories. I edit, I write, I do all the things and you don't have, you don't, at those big levels like Dateline, those reporters aren't doing quite <laughs> quite as much of the legwork. They kind of yeah. have like producers and people helping them out, which is great. And they come up with great stories. But it's really awesome in local news to be able to be so involved with every part of the story mm-hmm. versus just coming in and doing like interviews or one part of it or sharing like half the work with someone else, which it's nice from like a workload perspective, but like it's just not your baby in the same way as like your local news reporter who's really like i mean every there's there's decisions like no one's completely in control of anything there's checks and balances so that like yeah. the right information gets on screen but when i go out and like shoot a story i'm doing a lot of the work and then someone just like make sure it's uh, acceptable for air versus dateline msnbc where there's like half dozen people working on each story and they're sharing all of that workload. Yeah. do a lot more in local news. You have to wear a lot more hats. Yeah. And so is that, is that now the term like multimedia journalists? Multimedia is that, is that... journalist. Yeah. That's okay. what we call people who can pretty much do the whole thing on their own. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> you've, you've bounced all over the place. You were in like Minnesota at one point, mm-hmm. like Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I really went deep on LinkedIn if you didn't manage, if you didn't yeah. realize it. So uh, but like you you've been all over the place. So like I I know I can imagine that like, you know, multimedia journalism is a very very tough market to get into because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of openings there. Yeah. So um like what was the whole process of you getting your first job and then like why did you move to like certain other areas? Yeah, so my first job I probably applied to like 150 jobs to get my first job. Jeez. And you get a couple interviews, but most places you never hear back from, it's just, you know, you just throw out those applications and no one calls you and you have, and they don't even see most of them because they get such a high volume of applications, especially right after the college students graduate, because that's when there's like the most people applying. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an industry that a lot of people drop out of because it's a hard industry. Like you've mentioned, I've moved a whole ton there's a lot of feedback. It's a, it's a very feedback heavy industry. Yep, yep, if yep. you can't handle the feedback, it might be difficult. Like I once had, when I was in Minnesota, we had someone come in like a third party to critique us as reporters and stuff. And like, I usually look forward to that sort of stuff. But this guy told me that I should wear long sleeves on air because my arms are too big. And I'm like, Jeez. what am I supposed to? It's not even one helpful. And two, we need people that look all different types of ways, right? Like yeah, of course. representation. So the idea that like I should cover up my arms versus another reporter who might have like skinny arms or what they consider skinny arms. It just, it's, it's a different, the, the industry has evolved. I think it's continuing to evolve and more things are acceptable now. But when I was starting, that was like 2015, Either, which isn't that long ago, but mm-hmm. it just, pe- there was still in the smaller markets, especially this was Rochester, Minnesota. So it's a smaller market. It's where the Mayo Clinic is. Yep. It's a smaller market. So there's just, you know, they're more conservative in that way, like more conservative in those ideas. Like you have to wear this or your body has to look like this or, you know, mm-hmm. you should yeah. cover it. <laughs> but that was Minnesota. I was in Minnesota. Um, I just applied to a bunch of jobs and just saw what, what opportunities I got. And then just sort of took advantage of what, I got that's sort of what you have to do in this mm-hmm. industry. Then I was in Arkansas for a little bit. I was dating someone who I'm not dating now. We did for five years. <laughs> um, <laughs> we did it for five years. He lived at me a little bit in Minnesota. We met in college. Um, and we went to the CrossFit Games the first time I ever went together. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, he lived in LA and I was visiting for his birth for my birthday, which is in July, which is when the CrossFit Games used to be when they were in Carson. 
And he said, like, there's this big CrossFit event. I don't know what it is. It was the CrossFit Games. Um, he's like, do you want to go check it out? I know you, like, just started doing this. We can go. And so we went. We got, like, soccer stadium tickets, which is not the better tickets, but that was what was left, like, last yeah. second. Yeah. It was Rich Froning's last year. It was 2014. So it was a pretty cool year to be there <laughs> in retrospect. But my boyfriend at the time who invited me and, like, brought me as a birthday gift had no idea. Like it could have been like a local competition. He didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just saw like advertisements for it and is like, "You sh we should go check it out for your birthday." Yeah. So pretty cool to have went to that. But I so I, after that was in college. After that, I moved to Minnesota. Um, from Minnesota, I moved to Arkansas with that boyfriend. This was a couple years later, just to be closer because we, we were living apart. We were doing long distance for a long time. Then I got a job offer in Madison, Wisconsin, and I went there. And uh, I was there for a year and then I was terminated without cause there. Um, <laughs> is it, it, is it an at will state? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. Georgia is too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, but also in, um, in a lot of broadcast contracts at your one year mark, they can like reevaluate if they want to keep you. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a way to protect themselves, I guess, or to uh, do what they want. And mm -hmm. I was hired as a reporter, but they had me filling in a lot producing because I had some producing experience. I didn't really want to produce. So I brought this up to them a few weeks before that, like, hey, I was hired as a reporter. I don't mind helping out when I need to help out. But it's like last month I've reported like three times mm -hmm. because you keep on having me fill in producing and I just don't want to do that. And uh, then they terminated me without cause. So the cause is probably like I didn't want to do the job I wasn't hired to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they terminated me without cause. Uh, so I had 33 days until I had to continue working. They terminated me and I had 33 days left to work. That That's job. the worst. Yeah. So I had to keep working there. Um, I put together my reel. I applied to another like hundred jobs. They terminated me on a Monday and my days off were Wednesday, Thursday at that time. So then I applied for like Wednesday, I built my reel. And Thursday, I applied to like 80 jobs and applied to some more throughout the weekend. I got a call from the job I ended up taking in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, went there next. But when I left that job, the <laughs> my boss in Wisconsin was like, you know, you handled this with such grace. If you need a recommendation, I'll give it to you. And I was, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, um, I already have a job, but thank you. Yeah. A, nice, a fun thing to say. Yeah. I already had lined something up in that 33 days. And then I moved to Oklahoma. Then I was in Oklahoma for two years. And speaking of like feedback, when I got the job in San Francisco, um, my boss in Oklahoma, I told him my contract was coming up. I wasn't going to renew. I had an offer in San Francisco. And he goes, I don't really think you're ready for San Francisco. I think you should stay here for another year. Damn. And, and I Damn. was like, oh, <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> I already signed the contract. We're good. But like, why would I want to start keep working for someone who uh, who just told me that I uh, I wasn't good enough to work in San Francisco? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's crazy. And now now you're in San Francisco now, and so you've yeah. been there for a couple years. Or... Yeah. So I've been there for I've been here for three years. I just switched jobs and I haven't updated my LinkedIn. I should I know. Do that. I, I <laughs> saw that. Like you have like one that's like from like, you know, I, it's a multimedia journalism for like four months or something like that. Yeah. Um, maybe I did change it. Maybe I did change it. Um, so I'm at, I haven't changed it on Facebook. That's where I haven't changed it. Who uses uh, Facebook anymore? I don't really use Facebook anymore. Well, old people, old people. <laughs> yeah. I haven't changed my Facebook, but yeah. So I have, um, I was three years at a station called Cron here in the Bay area. It was an independent station. Now it's CW. So like while I was there, it became a CW affiliate, but I had an agent at the time and I didn't want to work with that agent anymore. Um, so when I, when my agent and I ended our contract, I had to, you know, stay with the agent as long as I was at Cron. Mm -hmm. So I ended up deciding to leave Cron um, because I just didn't want to carry this on forever. I to get, get a job of my own and be able to like, you know, Agents can be helpful, but it's nice to also keep your entire paycheck. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. over at CBS now, also in San Francisco. I live in Oakland, California, which is um, right over the bridge. Bridge, San yeah. Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, before this, I was I lived in San Francisco for a little bit. Then I lived in Pleasant Hill, where Diablo CrossFit is located. It's a pretty um, 
it's a gym that they've been on the podium before at the CrossFit mm-hmm. Games a long time ago. Um, but they, uh, they've they been in the CrossFit space for a long time, I believe, coming up on 20 years in 2025. Yeah. A CrossFit yeah. gym. So I moved out to Pleasant Hill to go there. And then I decided I needed something a little bit more. Pleasant Hill's very suburban, um, which is great if you like have kids and a mm-hmm. family and all that. But I'm like single. And 30. So I wanted to live somewhere a little bit more <laughs> lively. So I moved to Oakland, which I like. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And um, I, I did listen a little bit to the podcast from Diablo CrossFit. Oh yeah. That you're, that you're on. So yeah. um, you, you've, I think you, how, how many podcasts have you done? Cause the only ones I've seen were like maybe like two or three. Yeah. I haven't done a whole ton. I did that one with PRs all day. I recently did one with be friendly fitness. Okay. Like last week, last week, I think it was yeah. uh, previewing the semifinals, but I haven't okay. done a whole ton. Why, why not? Uh, no, particular no, one, no one's reason. asking. No one's asking me. No one's really? Asking. Really? Yeah, um, just. <laughs> okay. All right. Interesting. I mean, yeah. you got, you, you could literally talk to anybody forever. So, I mean, it, you're, you're used to the camera. Yeah. Talking is my skill. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Everyone has their own gifts. Um, I can, I have the gift of gab. I can talk for a long time. I've done live streams by myself where I just talk for an hour. Yep. That's what I do too. So, um, occasionally I'll go on YouTube, I'll do the YouTube shorts live and I'll get on my echo bike and just like ride for an hour and just Mm -hmm. like, see if whoever, like, I'll just talk throughout the whole thing. And if anybody has like a comment, they'll write, you know, write a comment and I'm like, Oh, well, well, you need to do this, this, and this, you know, and kind of go from there. But yeah, I could, I could talk for a while too. It's, the gift of gab is, is well in, in this household. So, yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think being able to communicate with people is so important when it comes yep. to a lot of different careers and stuff like that, but especially like YouTube. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, I do want to get into the CrossFit stuff. I know you yeah. said you've been doing it for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So what then, like, I think I'm, I think I'm the same amount of years as, as you 10 years. So um, what made you get into CrossFit and what made you kind of stick with it? So prior to CrossFit, I was never really into like sports in the more traditional sense. I started going to the gym with my mom when I was 13 or 12, turning 13 before school. Mm -hmm. And we just like do the elliptical. And like, that's really pretty much all I did for years. And then I got into doing yoga. So I got my yoga teaching certification when I was 17 um, because I was interested in doing that. And they were running a program at my gym or studio at my studio and I decided yep. to jump on board and do that and I did yoga for a while and I think I just looked for something that was a little bit more intense and this was hot yoga by the way hot vinyasa yoga which yep. is a little bit different than like yeah, yeah. what people think about yoga it's a little bit more like strength based and you're like heart rates up a little bit more because you're in a hot room so it's a little bit different so I did that for a while. And then I was in college and I was looking for something like a little bit more. I was kind of not like burnt out, but I was just, didn't feel like I was being challenged in the way I wanted to be in yoga. Mm -hmm. So I saw CrossFit and there was like probably a six month period that I was like a little bit intimidated by it and didn't know if I wanted to jump on board (laughs) with it. Yeah. 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 But then I was home for the summer and I mentioned to my mom that I was considering doing CrossFit And she worked out with me. She's who got me into the gym when I was 12. So she wanted to go do the foundations at me. She didn't end up liking it. She doesn't do CrossFit. But I did liked it a lot. We did the foundations together. So I kept going throughout that summer. And then when I went back to Syracuse, I joined CrossFit Syracuse and went there, you know, five or six days a week, which is off campus, drove over to the gym. And uh, then I just sort of stuck with it. I enjoyed the fitness aspect of it, the challenge of it, the really pushing yourself harder. And then I think one of the things that is so special about CrossFit and one of the things that's kept me part of it for so long is the community. I know like we all hear that so much. Yeah. The community, CrossFit, the community. But I've moved a ton as we've went over. (laughs) And finding a CrossFit gym in all of these places is something that's allowed me to like make friends and really enjoy being in these new spaces. Like a lot of people that I've met in broadcasting 
a lot of times people leave broadcasting because of having to move, having to give up your friends, having to be far away from your family, all of that. It pulls people away from the industry because that's what you have to do to get the experience. If you're yep. from New York City, like I am, that's the market I'm from. You're not going to start on air in New York City at 22 years old or out of college. Just not going to happen. It's not very mm. likely to happen, at least anything could happen, but it's not very likely to happen. So you have to yeah. expect that you're going to have to pack up your bags and move to a random city you may have never heard about before and live in that community for two to three years to get the experience before you can go on to something else. Mm -hmm. And having CrossFit, it's a place to find a community and to find friends and to have something to do and to have this group of people who like begin to care about you and check in on you and are like, Hey, where have you been? That kind of stuff. And I think that's what a lot of people in this industry lose and why they leave the industry and why people drop out of broadcasting along with the feedback that isn't always great, <laughs> but, but adding in the fact that you're like out of your element, um, whatever safety nets you may have had in your life up until that point are likely gone and mm -hmm. you have to like be on your own and having a dog also, I think has uh, <laughs> helped out a lot too with yeah. moving so much and starting over, over and over again, but having a gym and a place to go every single day and meet people and talk to people is super significant. And I think it's like the thing that keeps a lot of people coming back to CrossFit and something that has really made my life and my career, I think um, more obtainable because I had, I knew wherever I moved, I was going to have this community of, at the time they were strangers, but they were going to be there. I didn't know who they were going to be, yeah. but that I would find them. And like, it's this group of people that have similar values and interests as you, and you could find them in one place, like a regular mm -hmm. gym. You don't talk to people in the same way you talk to a CrossFit people at CrossFit gyms. No, it's no. odd to go up to people and have the same kind of conversations and then the group suffering, you know, that's special. <laughs> yeah. And so, so with, with me, I went, I did the open at our, uh, so what I train at a 24 hour gym, it's like a, uh, it's like a power lifting gym that has like mm -hmm. bumper plates and all the stuff for CrossFit. And so like, it's just me and one other guy. And then I have like a couple of the people that I've talked to before, but it's just like everyone else, like everyone keeps themselves, gets like the big headphones on and like yeah. super quiet. And then I did the open at a CrossFit gym. Uh, in my town and I was like hey you know can I do it here and the only reason why I'm not there is because it's opens at 5 30 and I get I start I, I work out at the gym at 4 30 in the morning okay. so so I was like hey you know can I train here can I like do the open here and they're like yeah abs absolutely and every single person there welcomed me with open arms mm -hmm. and saying and like no one was just like walked in being like who's, who's this guy and kept on walking and doing their own thing. Everyone came up to me, said, Hey, how you doing? What do you like? You know, what's your name? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I do like about CrossFit. Cause like, like you said, it's like a whole community of suffering and mm -hmm. it's, they're all friends and they know they they're in there to get to be better and then leave and do whatever, do what else they need to do with mm -hmm. their life and stuff like that. So that's the one thing I really do miss about going to a CrossFit gym. Yeah, I used to go to Diablo CrossFit, like I mentioned, and the owner, Craig Howard, I remember after one of the workouts, he said something. He wasn't even coaching that day. He was just taking class. And this has stuck with me. I don't think I've ever mentioned it to him. But he just said, hard things make happy people. And it's something that sort of like is stuck in my head. Like, I think the idea of like doing something hard every day that's like going to challenge your body, going to challenge yeah. your mind it's going to make you feel so much better throughout the rest of the day and more confident. Yep. And, and it also breeds community. And I think there's something really special about CrossFit, the methodology, and then the people that it attracts. Yes. And also when you go to the beach or go to someplace else, everyone knows who the alpha is at the beach. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. The alpha, yeah, alpha male or alpha female. They're like, Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. They either are on steroids or they do CrossFit. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. I went to an event at a friend's house. It was, I play a lot of board games in my, mm. uh, in my downtime. And it was a friend I know through a bunch of board game stuff. And I was there and the woman asked me if I was his trainer. I'm like, no, <laughs> why, would, why would I be his trainer? Why would I, why would I be at this board game event? I'm like, no, I know him because I play board games with him. 
but, <laughs> but like, I guess just, you know, people look at your body and like assume things even when they don't make any sense. Yep. Yep. And it's funny. Cause like, I, I get a lot of people saying, Oh, how much do you bench? And like, yeah. CrossFitters, we, we, yeah. we don't bench that much. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't benched in like six months. So yeah. like, you don't bench press. They're like, no. And like, what do you do? And I'm like, CrossFit. And they're like, yeah. oh, okay. Okay. And then half the people don't, don't really recognize CrossFit as an actual like way of exercise. And they just see like the, the games and they just are like, oh, you know, steroids or like no reps, whatever. Like just like completely like just crap on CrossFit. Cross, cross people that do crossfit yeah it's it's unfortunate crossfit is a little bit polarizing and i think part of that is because it works i think things that are successful you know and are hard right like people don't want to do the hard things that we do in crossfit yeah people don't want to hurt like we hurt in crossfit so if they could say like that's fake it's a no rep it's uh that's not a good workout like then they don't have to do it. They don't have to do mm -hmm. the hard thing. They can be, they can just delegitimize it so that they don't have to ever like step in and give it a try. Like it is hard today. I worked out alone just because I had to do some other things and couldn't go to a class. And it was a workout that was five rounds, two minutes on one minute off two minutes of 12 burpee box jump overs. And Ooh. then as many wall balls as possible. That's hard. Yeah. It's and just like alone, just like to do wall balls forever. Like there's no one around. Like I was alone in the gym. No one was even there. I'm like, you can stop. But I'm like, I'm not going to stop because like, I won't be proud of myself. Yeah. If I yeah. Stop. Yep. Exactly. But it would be easier to stop. And like, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people want to do the easier thing. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't say it. <laughs> Yeah, I think subconsciously a lot of and I think as a society, we've made things super easy. Like our lives are relatively comfortable. Like we as humans used to like, you know, forage and hunt. And now we uh, sit at a desk and type. Yep, And call Grubhub or something like that. Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, I, I do those things, too. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with those things. But I do mm -hmm. think that our bodies and our minds are meant to do hard things. And uh, it can become easy to slip into a place of doing the easier thing when that's like what, you know, surrounds you. Like there's so many products that come out to make life easier. Everything's about like, how do we make things easier? Yep. And yep. I think it's not, it goes back to hard things make happy people. I think if you do hard things, you're just going to feel happier long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, um, you've been, obviously we've talked this before, you've been all over the place in the country, like, you know, Tulsa, Arkansas, you know, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, Minnesota. So you've, you've been to probably a lot of CrossFit gyms. Yes. And so what in your mind, what makes a CrossFit gym stick out between, you know, than anybody other, any of the other gyms that are around the neighborhood? I think it has to do with the people, but also like the mentality towards the workouts. I've been to some CrossFit gyms where people don't really want to push themselves. It, it goes back to like yep. almost being at like a 24 hour fitness where people just want to like do a little bit. Um, they're going to like stop and get their water eight times during the workout. It's not that you can't have water, but like if we're doing like a, <laughs> you know, like a, a six minute workout, yeah, how you can't go for breaks water. do we need? <laughs> yeah. But there'll be people that are just like stopping or if like I would, be on a team with these people. And like, I don't care how I'm like an effort over everything person. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're like doing half the weight as I'm doing, but you're giving it your all, that's awesome. I don't think you're like pulling me down. I don't think any of that, but if I'm if like, we're going, you know, back and forth on movements and I'm done and you're still sitting there and not working out. That's where like, I get kind of annoyed. <laughs> yeah. because like when you're on a team with someone you got to like keep moving and like when, when it's your turn you got to step up yeah yeah so like there'll be these people that are just like oh wait another 30 seconds and i'll just like hang out and it's just like the, the intensity isn't there mm -hmm. intensity is such a big part of crossfit and there are some gyms where i don't think they really push the intensity aspect of it as much and i think it's really key to the success of being a successful CrossFitter and feeling fit and getting the best results, you mm -hmm. need to have that intensity piece. And there are some CrossFit gyms that lack that and just kind of let their members do whatever they want. 
scale the workouts however they want. Um, don't hold up the standards of the workouts. Yep, yep. And those are the kind of things that make a gym a gym I probably won't join because I've definitely went to gyms when I've moved somewhere and decided I didn't want to be a part of them. So that's like the kind of thing that I'll realize, you know, this gym just doesn't, and that's okay. Like that's, that's a gym for someone else. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like that, the, there's still a value in that gym and there's still a clientele for that gym. It's just not the CrossFit gym I want to be a part of. And I think when we think about like how CrossFit was created and my dog's, you're, you're good. Don't worry about it. I'm like, why am I, why is my arm moving? My dog wants to play. Um, <laughs> but I think that one of like the cornerstones of CrossFit is the intensity aspect. I think if you're doing it to its fullest extent, to its best expression, you're going to have that. And I personally like to be at a gym that has that, that has intensity, that really ingrains in people this idea of virtuosity and wanting to like do everything to its fullest extent, hit mm -hmm. the standards of the movements, do the things at your most difficult level, right? Like whatever the stimulus of the workout is, whatever is the most challenging stimulus you can get, that's what you should be doing. I think there are some gyms where people will like scale forever. And, and like, that's fine if that's all you can do. Um, but sometimes I think there's some people that don't realize their full potential because they're at a gym where they're not like, Hey, like we can get you that pull up. Yeah. Yeah. We they're not, they're them. not, they're not pushing it. They're not pushing them because they just yeah. don't want to. So, yeah. So like, like most people can like, if you do CrossFit for enough time, most people can get that pull up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of people at some of these gyms that don't really push for that. And there are people I've talked to at these gyms when I've dropped in on in them. And like, people will say to me like, Oh, I've been here three years and I'm really want to get my pull up. And I'm like, well, if you really want your pull up and you've been here three years, you can probably get your pull up. Like, yeah. let's, let's talk about why you haven't gotten a pull up and I'm not level one certified or anything like that. I pro probably should be. Um, but I haven't done that. But I think if you're at the right gym and you've been doing CrossFit three years, you're going to see those results. Mm -hmm. So you just need to, like, I like to find a gym that has that intensity um, that really focuses on movement standards, teaching people the standards. I think that's really important. And I think no one likes to hear like you need to get deeper or you need to stand all the way up on the box. Like no one wants when they're dying, no one really wants to hear that but you're going to be better for it. And I think yeah. the gyms that attract those people who want to be better for it are the kind of gyms I look for and the gyms yeah. that want to set that standard. Yeah. 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 For, for me, it's, it's been hard to try to make it into a CrossFit gym because mainly of the times and stuff like that. So like all for me, like how I do intensity is kind of, so I, I follow Misfit Athletics. So they're they're a company based in Maine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharpen the X. Uh, use use code Type One for ten percent off. So anyway, uh, uh, shameless plug. But anyway, um, but like it's I follow them and they have a Discord. So I kind of see you know if if someone's like in another country like has their numbers or I'll just go off on my own and like all all the learning that I've done is pretty much like through me like th through like YouTube or. Mm -hmm you know, all of my Olympic weightlifting is just like constantly practicing all this stuff. And so, you know, I, it's like, it's almost to the point where like, I've been doing the fitness stuff for so long and as, as well as you for 10 yeah. years, um, that like, you kind of want to critique people. And it's just like, mm -hmm. you're at the point you're like, uh, I don't know if I really should. Yes, and, like, yeah, I've, <laughs> yeah. I do run into that. And, and then sometimes if I'm at a gym where they're not, um, like reinforcing those things, I sometimes wonder if the person who's not being told, Hey, you're not doing this right. If they even know. Yeah. I think it's worth telling them. Cause there's probably some people who might be like, Oh, I had no idea. I wasn't squatting low enough. Yeah. And like, it's a, like, and then I think sometimes like when I have, when I'm at a gym and like the coach is coaching, it's sometimes helpful just to hear if they like yell out to the whole class, like make sure you're getting depth. Because even if it wasn't me, I might think like, oh, let me just let me just make sure I'm getting a little bit extra depth here. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. you do is very impressive um, to do it by yourself. And you definitely like people definitely can get times, get workout scores and like try to chase those. But it takes a lot more like between the ears to to do that by yourself without someone next to you and just be like, OK, I'm racing the clock or I'm racing this number.
on yeah. my own. Yeah, that that's that's why I get somebody that um has really no experience with CrossFit or like does does kind of like CrossFit ish workouts, and I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, do you want to tag along with me? Here are the workouts, you know, let's do it. And so like and it does help having partners in there, but obviously, you know, there's been times I've been all by myself uh -huh. and it's like all these people at the gym are just like staring at me. Like, what are you doing? You're just like a big sweaty mess. Like what's going on? And it's like, you know, I'm just, the whole focus is like just one set, one percent better every single day. That's, that's mm -hmm. the way I think of it. So, and even, even during the, um, the thruster, uh, chest to bar to muscle up workout, Mm -hmm. that was uh, for the for the for the open it was someone at the at the box was like because like they were cheering me on but i i couldn't hear anything yeah. and they're like you know once you got to the muscle ups you're like okay each rep you do you're gonna be better than somebody else yep. so just like and i was like oh yeah let's let's do it okay and yeah and just kind of go from there it's like it's it's hard like i kind of like think like there's another crossfit athlete like next to me Mm -hmm. and i'm not a, i'm not a crossfit athlete i just do crossfit but anyway yeah. but like i have a games athlete like right next to me and saying like okay he's pushing me so i gotta be better and like i can't take these shorter break i can't take these long breaks you know i gotta do shorter and then go 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 it really is like you talked about sometimes bring someone in with you who might not even like know a lot about crossfit but even that sometimes like it helps too, because like, as long as the person's trying, you don't have to be trying at the same level, right? Like if you were working out next to a CrossFit Games athlete, you guys probably would be doing the exact same thing, depending on the workout, but yeah, you might true. not be doing the same exact thing. But as long as you're both trying and putting in effort and the same amount of effort and intensity like that, that breeds success, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So um, you actually made it to quarterfinals. Yes. So, and, um, you did, you did pretty well. And so did you, while, while, since you've been doing CrossFits for so long, did you have like at one point, like any ambitions to be like, okay, like I want to go to regionals. I want to go to like the games or anything like that. I don't think I ever have mostly because I've always struggled on the strength side mm. and all of the strength numbers seem so unobtainable to me. <laughs> that like I've never really thought like I <laughs> had a shot at that but as I get closer to masters I think like it could be cool one day to make like masters semifinals yeah the yeah 200 athletes that go to that so like that's something that I'm like hmm, maybe in uh five years I could qualify for the masters semifinals so yeah. that's more of what I've thought about and I have, I do enjoy competing from time to time, but it's like more on a local level. I did do like Granite Games back when that was a thing. I don't mm -hmm. think Granite Games exists anymore. Um, and I've done Wadapalooza. So I've went and done a couple different competitions and I enjoy doing that. I've taken some, like a break from competing in CrossFit, except for the Opens. I think the Open is something that's so easy to do in the sense that it's like in your gym. And I think there's a good test every year. Like I think there's very, unless you're physically incapable of doing it for one reason or another one year, yep. I think it's such a great, just like check-in. You don't have to always do better. Like, but it's like, it's a community event. You'll do the same workouts. The games athletes do. It's just a cool concept. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always done that, but I've sort of taken a break off of like actually doing competitions. I haven't done a CrossFit competition in over a year, but um, I'm thinking that I want to do another one. Yeah. I've, I've never done one. I've, I've always done the oh. open. That's it. And okay. so I've, I've wanted to do a weightlifting competition too, as well. So he, but like, I, I have a disadvantage. So like I'm six, six, so oh. it's a lot harder for, for me to like, you know, like string up a couple like pull-ups and stuff. Like everyone else is doing like two or three, I'm doing like one. So, but be I can off like five, six. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And so I, uh, I it's crazy because like I'm taller than like Matt DeLugos and I'm taller yeah. than like a bunch of other people. And they're like, it's it's crazy to see like how well they do. And, and then I'm like, OK, I can kind of I could I could try to game that. But of course, like me being 44 doesn't really help out either. And so and I get not a full time. I'm not a full time. Not a full -time, full -time. You know, athlete. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A new, new division. True. True. Well, yeah. Again, Jason Grubb. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, the, my, another thing is like everyone's telling me I should do like weightlifting competitions because my strength numbers are like so high mm -hmm. that like they like you should you should you can like go you go international like win medals and stuff like that. And so I was like, 
Yeah, okay, okay, I can consider it, but I just I've never done a competition except for the open. Would you miss doing the CrossFit part of it? Yeah, I, I like doing CrossFit because like I've even considered doing like a bodybuilding competition, but like mm -hmm. this was like this was like years and years ago. So um, and I was thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna do CrossFit the whole time during this bodybuilding competition and see how I, you know come up with like everyone else that just does the regular bro splits yeah maybe so, that would be an interesting series to document too yeah yeah i mean i but i just can't take it seriously bodybuilding like i'll i'll flex and i'll just start laughing and it, it's, i i have a, a yeah it's too. yeah i mean but it's also it, for the people that like it but like it, it does look a little bit goofy from the outside but i don't know enough about it i'm sure yeah yeah but we'll see but anyway um about documenting so you have a youtube channel and so um you said you've done it like what three years roughly two three years i started it during the open of the 2022 crossfit season okay okay so it's it, a little it, over two years march yeah. of 2022 okay so your face was in a camera the whole time as a journalist and now you mm -hmm. wanted your face in the camera more for this youtube channel so yeah. what what was the whole like what were you thinking of like, Hey, I'm going to do this YouTube channel and, and see what happens. I think the biggest reason I wanted to do the YouTube channel is because CrossFit really has changed my life. I've talked a little bit about like how it's helped me and my transitions and all of these things. And it's also helped me have a totally different relationship with my body. There was a long time, like when I was in high school, beginning of college where like the goal was just to be skinny and as tiny as I can be. And like, that was mm -hmm. the focus and like how, yeah how low can the scale get and things like that. And CrossFit just completely shifted that entire mentality. And I feel like I have a healthier relationship with my body than I ever have before. And it always continues. Like I just grow to appreciate my body more and more through CrossFit. And I see so many women who struggle with body image things. So like the way CrossFit has changed my life from meeting people, from my relationship with myself, um, I think mentally too, like making me mentally stronger. I just wanted to share that experience and that love and that passion for this with other people. Mm -hmm. like, I think yeah, that was like, awesome. and, and connect with more people. Cause it's been awesome to connect with more people who also feel passionately about this sport and this space. So mm -hmm. that was really like the idea behind it more than like, I want to make it necessarily about me but making it about me sort of gives me content always. If I want to like help promote this brand yeah. and this methodology yeah. and this idea, like I have, I continue to have these ha having my own, like a station where like I have myself as the center, I can always make more content. I'm always available for me. Mm -hmm. Where That's like awesome. I relied on other now, people. Yeah. Never yeah. know if they were yeah, like, available. I, True, true. And so did you ever think about like doing like the like a podcast or was it just like, I'm going to just do a straight vlog and like, that's it? Um, I've thought about a lot of things. A podcast would be really cool. I do enjoy talking, but it the format I have now, I feel like just allows a lot of flexibility. Like whatever yeah. I want to do, I can do that. And because I don't like, I don't have any sponsorships. I can't do sponsorships at my job as a journalist. But I don't think I would want to do sponsorships anyway, because not having sponsors allows me to do whatever I want with no one to answer to. And I don't have to hit any specific metrics for anyone or anything. Yeah. I can just produce the content I want to produce the way I want to produce it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. So um, what when did you realize like. Like I can imagine what your first video was. You're probably like cringing the whole time and you'll put it on YouTube. You're like, oh my God, like I should have said this. I should have said this. But um, like when did you start seeing an uptick in the views for your YouTube channel? Um, I don't well, I don't know if I ever really like cringe that way. I do remember having that experience when I first started doing media stuff when I was mm -hmm. like in high school. Yeah. But by the time I was doing YouTube, um, I mean there was a certain amount of like that feeling, but I've just been broadcasting and watching myself and listening to myself for so long at this point that it's like, I don't have that same reaction. I'm just used to it. I also mm -hmm. feel for me, it's made me more comfortable with who I am. I don't look at photos or like someone takes a picture and I'm like, Oh no, delete it. 
I'm like, that just looks like me. I've, I've seen myself so much. I've, I know what yeah. I look like. I'm very aware and feel very comfortable with it. And I also think CrossFit has contributed to that too, which is feeling better in my body. Mm -hmm. um, but I really noticed an uptick. I started with an open series, which I think helped get like right away some views because people are doing the CrossFit open workouts. I didn't, now I publish my whole open workout and do them immediately. That's not what I did the first year because I just didn't have, I just didn't know as much about what would do well. Yeah. But just posting bits of that. Like I was getting hits because people were interested in those workouts. Like I picked a time that was going, I was going to do something that was searchable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that helps a lot is doing something that people can search. And then actually Andrew Hiller made that video on me just a few months into me doing CrossFit. He made like a whole video. Like he found, he was, it was during his time when he was making a video every single day. So he needed a lot of content. <laughs> yeah. and I was doing like, I did a live stream wrapping up semifinals or previewing semifinals, one or the other. And he happened to find my live stream. Like he just happened to open up his phone. He was looking for content for the next day, typed in CrossFit. I happened to be live. He's like, you had like two viewers. Um, and he came in, he like put the bats in the chat. And I was like, oh no, am I in trouble? Um, <laughs> But then he made like a whole video and it was actually like that video was pretty complimentary and um, it was a good video and it was nice of him. I didn't ask him to do any of that. He just happened to stumble upon my video and felt that he wanted to promote my content because he liked what I was doing. And then I got a huge bump from that. And then my next like really big bump was at the CrossFit Games in 2022 when they announced Tia was retiring, but then like not retiring. Yeah. That I, I made a video about that the night it happened. I That video got 23,000 views and I am sitting on a toilet in that video with the toilet closed, but it was filmed. Of course, yeah. But it was filmed in the bathroom of my hotel room because the lighting in, in the hotel room was so yellow, like orange, that it mm -hmm. made me look like an Oompa Loompa. So I realized the lighting in the bathroom was better. So I went and just like sat in the bathroom and recorded this YouTube video. <laughs> on Tia's potential retirement. And it was also Rich Froning's retirement. So it was like a video about like, you know, the goats potentially retiring. Yeah. Um, and it got like 23,000 views and I got so many subscribers. I wasn't even monetized yet because I just hadn't reached that threshold. But that video sort of pushed me over the edge because I think the next morning after that happened, everyone was searching that. And I had made this video in the bathroom of my hotel room. And Which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it did really well. And that those are like my moments that really picked up traction on my channel. But now like I do this open series last two years where I publish the entire workouts. I do them on Thursday right after they're mm. announced. Yeah. And then I do like a little voiceover over them and just give my score and let everyone go and chase it. And that always does really well. And I always get a bump from that. So that's like something that's continuous though. Like I can keep producing that every year when that happens. So that's a pretty cool thing about CrossFit too, is the community continues to grow. More people get introduced to CrossFit, more people do the open and more people see my content and hopefully I can help them uh, get through the workouts. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I know you did have one video of your love for rad shoes. Cause I, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess like you did a box opening. I think it was like the mm -hmm. per up uh, the purple ones. It was like yeah. the black and purple ones. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you, do you see those kind of videos as well? Getting like some decent views for that? Yeah. Especially I did a couple, I've done a couple of videos on the rad shoes and I have some that are like older that still get hits all the time because people are searching the shoes and then I have these videos that have done well, you know, over years, they keep populated on YouTube. The algorithm is pretty good on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but like, that's just me talking about something that I really like, like no one's paying me. I'm not, there's no sponsorship, the shoes. I paid the full price for them. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I got no <laughs> discount, no deal, uh, struggle to even get my size and the color I want, but I like the shoes and, uh, and I feel like also the fact that it really is my authentic opinion on them. No, I don't have any sponsorships. Nobody's influencing me. I am just, like, I just want to tell you, like all of you people that I like this and I think you mm -hmm. might like it too. And I think that authenticity also helps those videos continue to do well. But I think it's a little bit different when someone comes out and is like, Rad sent me these shoes for free and I like them. Um, versus yeah, someone of course, like, you're going to be biased the whole time. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like versus me saying I spent one hundred and fifty dollars on the uh, these shoes, and then I waited for the long shipping, and uh, then I had to pick them up at the post office because of the weird shipping, because mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you have to sign to like get them to get them. So uh, <laughs> I went through all that, and I still like the shoes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I've I've never worn a pair, so I, I'm I'm mainly like a Metcon guy. So okay, I like the Metcons. The Metcons is what I wore pre rads mm -hmm. and then i did wear the nobles for a little bit they're not the best shoe no 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 <laughs> Th those are my launch shoes now so yeah i got i did get those for free not for like doing media but i used to volunteer at the crossfit games i think mm -hmm. i volunteered three years at the crossfit games and once at regionals back when regionals was a thing and you got shoes for volunteering like three days or more yeah. so i got shoes free shoes from that so I've had a couple pairs of uh, Nobles from that and some pairs of Nanos from that too. I've worn all the shoes, almost, yeah. not, almost, not all of them, but I've worn a lot of the shoes. Yeah. So, so since you're, you have all those shoes, which one is your favorite one of all? I mean, the Rads are my the favorite. Rads, yeah. And like, that's why I keep buying them, even though I could buy the Metcons and get two pairs for the price I'm paying for like a, on sale for the yeah. price I'm pairing for the Rads. But I just like the rads for pretty much everything, which is the convenience of them. Like the Metcons, I liked for some things, but not as much for others. Like they're not great running shoes. But like the rads, I can do running workouts in and like I still like them. I don't feel like I need to have multiple shoes for multiple things. I don't mind lifting in them. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I like them. They don't pay me. I just hope hey. to, I hope to get the color I want when they drop new shoes on Thursday, to be totally honest. I, yeah, I've heard <laughs> some of the colors that they're having are like outrageous. Yeah, they're really they have really cool colorways and they don't uh they they don't restock. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you kind of gotta get and that, that's part of the novelty of it. It's also part of the fun of it. I think it's kind of cool that like it's a smaller company and they uh do small batches of shoes versus so many of these companies that are just huge. And I do feel like Nike has sort of went out on CrossFit a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I for a long time, like when Reebok, their contract is going to be over, I'm like, okay, get ready for the, the Nike CrossFit games. Like, I really thought it was going to be Nike. And then well, all of a sudden, like, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, oh, don't, I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happened with that. But like, then the <laughs> Noble, then Noble came and I'm like, who? yeah. I know, I know it's a Massachusetts company, but I'm like, who is this? Yeah. So well, now it's a Tom Brady company. Yeah, I don't think he doesn't really do good with touching with other people's companies. So yeah, we'll, we'll like, see how that goes. Yeah, like FTX. Yeah, let's just yeah. leave that alone. So, but uh, I don't even but, think Rock is technically the title sponsor of the CrossFit Games. Like, I don't think there is a title sponsor this year. Which is I don't insane. Think it has Rock on it. I think it just says CrossFit Games on the logo. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's getting the Go Ruck shoes, the Go Ruck like, it, um, and I think they're getting like North American apparel or something like that. Or like, I don't even know if it's oh, a Go yeah, Ruck like apparel. Northern it's... Spirit apparel. Yeah, that's it. Doing, doing the apparel for semifinals. I don't know if they're going to be doing it for the games, but I know they're doing it for semifinals. I don't know if we know who's doing the apparel for the games yet. Maybe Go Ruck. I mean, Probably. Go Ruck wasn't ready. Yet. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with. That's an interesting change um the, they were really pumping up those go ruck shoes though during the semifinals coverage oh yeah the of course they were. yeah but, nope. uh, chasing no, them, like they're not rough at all he kept on, <laughs> kept on saying that. <laughs> <They're> very <laughs> comfortable i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah okay but um what so like <laughs> i i'm not gonna like them i, I know it so um but <laughs> So with, with your YouTube channel, I know you're like recently new to it. So mm -hmm. what what's the goal of the channel? Are you looking to go like be a full time YouTuber or like what's no, the? I don't no, think okay. I have any interest in being a full time YouTuber. I don't really have a lot of interest in working for myself. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's nice to be employed by someone else and to not have to worry about where my next paycheck is coming from. True. Yeah. Or my health insurance. Um, I think like if I was ever at the point where I could, my YouTube is very successful and I can work part-time. That would be awesome. Um, but I think I'd, I, I enjoy my job, my actual profession. Um, mm -hmm. YouTube is definitely a passion project and I love sharing my passion and I love 
other people enjoying watching it and uh, supporting me and the conversation I get to have through that, the people I've gotten to meet, like meeting you today. Um, I really loved what it's brought me. I just don't think it's ever something I want to do full time, Mm -hmm. but I do have like metrics and goals and things I want to hit. I do want to like continue to grow my channel and do stuff with it, but I just don't think I'd ever want it to be my, uh, my only gig. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So do you, do you do shorts at all? Or do you like do short clips from your your videos and just post them on shorts? I don't do shorts. And that's, that's like the way people get a lot of subscribers on uh, YouTube is the shorts. Yep. But what I will say is what I've noticed is channels that have a ton of subscribers from shorts. They don't do well with the videos, the long form videos. They don't do as well. A lot of that. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning for me, I did. Yeah. I had a, I had a couple shorts that hit over a million views. Wow. And and then I got like over like one thousand subscribers, and um, I, yeah, like recently, like lately, I've been seeing more of an uptick on like you know views with my long form content. And yeah. So and like I. I go super heavy on YouTube. Like I do with, with this podcast, like our, our podcast, I'll do like one full video and then like mm-hmm. four shorts Yeah. throughout the whole week. And then I do, mm-hmm. I do um, like short form podcasts. And then what I'll do is I'll do a short almost every single day. And then I'll do, uh, I'm trying to do like more posts for the, the community posts. So yeah. I'm just trying to grow that, but it's just, yeah, it, it in the beginning, it was a little hard. Yeah. And then I, then I stopped doing shorts for a while and I didn't see an uptick in like, you know, subscribers or even views of my video. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to go back to doing what I was doing before. And you know, it's, it's doing pretty good so far. I've had a couple that are like over 500 V like 500 views. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take it. So I think the people that are watching shorts are not necessarily the same people that are watching the no. long form videos. Yeah. So it's like, what, what are you like? You could, it, it depends on how much effort you want to put in and how much time you want to put in. You can definitely bring some of the short viewers. Like if you get a million views on a short, you are going to convert some of those viewers to long form viewers, but the percentage is not as high as most people would like it to be. I yeah. think like if you gain your viewers from long form viewers, those are the viewers that are going to watch the long form content. True. Yeah. And and from the YouTube monetization perspective, um, I think most people can benefit more monetarily the long form. from the long form. And you have to have the viewers who want to sit there and watch the long form to benefit. Yeah. So you can get yeah. like this crazy like subscriber bump from having a, a short go viral, but it doesn't always benefit you as much as if you were just to focus on trying to not necessarily you, but anyone focus on trying to get longer form content that the right viewers are going to want to watch. Yeah. And that's, and that's why I do the four shorts, yeah, including the long form, because I know, I know if, if you got to be like, you know, really dedicated to watch of like a YouTube, you know, podcast video. And so that's why I clip out like the main important one, like the, mm-hmm. the important sections of it. And obviously every, every, every minute of the podcast is important, but mm-hmm. like, you know, the ones that may get the listeners or listeners or, or the viewers to watch and see the whole thing. So yeah. that's why I cut them up in four. And so I'll, I'll get, I'll literally get the bump and views with the full and then get even more bumps and views for mm-hmm. the shorts. So it's kind of like a win-win for me. Yeah. There's, I think there could be definitely be a benefit in doing shorts. I have done a couple and seen some bumps from them, but for me, I like the long form content. It's what I enjoy doing more. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. And because it's, because for me, like YouTube is really like just like a labor of love it's just like i it's my passion project mm. i don't want to be doing things i don't care as much about true just for like the numbers because like i don't i would like the numbers for myself and to continue to share like how much i love crossfit and how it's changed my life like i would like more numbers for that but i don't want to do it at the expense of burning myself out on things that don't bring me as much joy mm. So I just would rather people find the content that I enjoy making that I feel passionate about and the content that I think is my best work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very cool. 
So um, we're getting close to the end. So I have some uh, rapid fire questions. They're not really rapid fire. You can take as long as you want, but uh, okay. I have to say something at the, for the, for the final questions. But um, so um, since it's kind of like in the middle of the year, what are your goals like personal or like, you know, YouTube or even like, you know, journalism wise for you? Um, goals. That's an interesting question. I feel like I just had like a bunch of big changes. I just moved in February. I started a new job in March. Um, so I think my goal right now is just to figure out the new workflow at my new station. So that's like mm -hmm. journalism Lee. That's my goal. I also, yep. um, in that same realm, the station I'm at now does a lot of work that, uh, has been, has been successful at the Emmys. And I think I would love to have something at the end of this next year that just happened, the nominations. So in a year from now, since the beginning of this, basically, I would mm. like to have something I feel like I'd like to submit for an Emmy award. Okay. Very cool. So that's a goal I have in the next year, but it's kind of like not mid year for that. It's kind of the beginning of the year for that. Mm. Um, but so is CrossFit actually. Like it's kind of the beginning of my CrossFit year. I look at it as because semifinals, well, quarterfinals for me just ended. So now it's back to the drawing board. So for CrossFit, I really want to, because I'm weak, uh, be, able to clean, <laughs> <laughs> be able to clean 155, which is not heavy for most people. But for me, has been a weight that's um, knocked me out of two quarterfinals workouts the last two years. Mm -hmm. My max clean is 150, so clean and jerk. So I would like to be able to clean and jerk 155. So that's my goal there. Um, and I think those are like my two big goals right now. Get stronger always in CrossFit, get stronger. Physically. Okay. <laughs> so do you have, do you have an idea of like what kind of like movie you want to do to get that and possibly get that Emmy? Um, no, not, uh, so like news stories, you just never know what's going to pop up and what could be great. Like you can get an Emmy for a breaking news event, which I would have no idea like what that uh, gotcha. would be. Okay. Um, but you can also get it for just like a compilation of your work throughout the year. So if I was to submit for that, like there's not like a specific thing, it would be more of like just trying to okay. elevate my work that I feel comfortable, like putting together a good compilation for that. The last station I was at wasn't very focused on that type of thing. So like we weren't really encouraged to do that. We're here. They, they like to focus on awards a little bit more or doing work that takes a little bit more time. So I'm actually shifting in my, what I'm doing right now. I was doing day of reporting up until last week and starting this week, I'm doing um, more character driven stories. Okay. So I'm doing two stories a week versus a story every single day. So that I can have more time to develop the characters and to shoot the video and stuff like that. So my hope is that that will result in something that'll help me get to the point where I can submit for an Emmy. But um, that literally started this week. Okay. And this is my Sunday. Like I'm off sa uh, Sunday, Monday. So it really hasn't even started yet. It starts tomorrow. Um, so how that's going to pan out, I don't know. But I consider myself a very determined person. And if I say that I'm going to focus and do something, um, I have a pretty good track record of doing that. Yeah. So I, I'm going to be putting efforts into that arena. And hopefully that results in something positive. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. At least work I'm proud of. Like, even if it doesn't result in a nomination, I would like it to result in work I'm proud of. And yeah. then I'm happy. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So uh, next question, what is in your gym bag? Oh, um, in my gym bag, I usually don't have like that much crazy stuff, but I always have like my lifting shoes, um, my knee sleeves, because when I'm doing high volume squats or heavy squats, uh, I need those for- Yep for emotional support, <laughs> not even physical. That just provides me with emotional support. Yeah. Um, tape, like goat tape, because I'll tape my wrists a lot if I'm doing like muscle ups and stuff like that. Cause I'll fall script. So that's always in there. Headphones for days when I have to work out alone. That's <laughs> so hard for me. I can't do that. I can't and do you, that. You can't do headphones. No, no, I can't do it. Like, like the ones that go in your ears. Nope. I, nope. So, so quick story. So I tried it once doing clean and jerks. And so mm -hmm. 
the the uh, AirPod fell off my ears, and I I had like I think I was like it had to be like three hundred pounds like over my head, and I was mm-hmm. like gonna drop it, and I'm like I see this like AirPod like right in the line of fire of like where the bumper plates are, and I'm like, crap, what am I gonna do? And so there was like really not that much room like to throw yeah. it, so I kind of like kind of j- jimmy like shimmied it like over to the right, and I kind of dropped the weight, so it would like I'd be like AirPods like in the middle of where the barbell is, and I was like. Yeah, I'm not doing this again. I think you need better headphones. True, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> risk it. To like really like stick on your ears. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But I can't carry those because sometimes I like to, you know, if I go for a run or something, they're nice to always have with me just in case I need them. Yep. And my weight belt. I would say those are the things that are always in my gym bag. Other than that, my gym bag's kind of boring. Okay. Okay. Do you have one of those Haven gym bags or something like that? I don't, but I've, I looked at them and I subscribed to their, uh, their email list recently. Cause they look like pretty cool bags. I have a yeah. noble backpack. Yeah. So, so literally I think it was like the past couple people that I've interviewed, they have Haven gym bags and they swear by them. I've heard good like, things. I've seen good things. They're expensive. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'll, I'll, st- I'll stick with my bear complex backpack. So I'll, I'll be, I'll be happy with that. Maybe something will go on sale. That's my yeah. hope. I like yeah. to buy things on sale. It makes me feel like I'm like, I did the right thing. Yep. Yep. I completely agree. Um, so the next question is what is something that people really don't know you about you? I know you talked about board games earlier, but is there anything else that like something that you do that no one really knows about? Um, I like to take a lot of classes. I take classes through, um, different like online colleges just to learn new things. I like to always be learning. I, um, I feel like I have time right now. Like if I ever get married, have kids, my life will be a little bit busier, I imagine. And my time won't be my own. So while I have my own time, I like to definitely do the things I can to like expand my mind in different different aspects so that I can learn as much as I can and become a more well-evolved human. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Next question. So what is your favorite book? My favorite book. Hmm. It could be fiction Um, or nonfiction. It could be whatever. Yeah. I think the first thing that always comes to mind when people ask that is untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's like a book of um, it's, it is a, based on her life and just like stories of her life. It's not exactly a biography. Mm -hmm. It's a memoir. So I really, I really do enjoy books about people's real lives. I, maybe that's like the journalist in me, but I like to hear about things that like happened and how people are overcome like real situations. I just find that really interesting and inspiring. Okay. Very cool. 